The sky has long been a fascination, a realm of the gods, and civilizations have been building toward it for centuries. But a skyscraper is an altogether modern idea made possible by modern technologies. Skyscrapers are really an American invention. The first use of the word was around the 1880s. They were office buildings that concentrated a workforce. They employ technologies like the elevator, like steel construction to build very efficiently and to pile a lot of space onto a small piece of land. By using steel frames for structural support rather than heavy masonry walls, architects were able to get creative. Skyscrapers began to get taller around the turn of the 20th century. There was competition to be the world's highest. And that pinnacle tower becomes so intimately connected with modernity. Skyscraper hitching post for the great airliners of tomorrow. After World War II, a new kind of technology of glass allows for the curtain wall. Windows you could open made way for giant glass walls. They gave more floor space and natural light, but fresh air was shut out and replaced with air conditioning. The 1960s and 70s, that was the period of the World Trade Center with the Twin Towers. The Sears Tower in Chicago got a little bit taller. But it was also the end of an era as American cities began to suburbanize and spread out. The US had led the charge into the skies, but the rest of the world soon caught up. In Hong Kong, where the land is very scarce, going high is almost the only solution. There's that need in terms of urbanization, so people need to move to the cities, they need to work, to live. In Asia and the Middle East, we took it to another level. Every city wants to have this landmark that gives that a sense of distinct culture. From the end of the 20th century, architects in the East have been developing new techniques to beat the wind and climb even higher. You want to design a shape that is not square. You want rounded corners or faceted corners so that it takes pressure off the building when the wind hits it you design the building to sway a little bit. We use reinforced concrete to have that flexibility that also absorbs movement. The Taipei 101 used a step design, cut out corners and a 700 ton suspended dampener to help it withstand typhoons and earthquakes. But it was Dubai's Burj Khalifa that redefined SuperTool. Its exaggerated tapered shape, ability to flex up to six feet at its top and a double layered outer skin, help it to counter desert storms and extreme heat. To build the world's tallest tower is a great demonstration of technological know-how as well as wealth, of course. But the vanguard of architects has been very focused on sustainability. We want to design something that's as sustainable as possible in terms of the spaces, the use of materials. Tall buildings is sustainable where we can have a lot of people in a small footprint, but we all understand that building in itself is taking resources from the earth. In cities like Hong Kong, where skyscrapers dominate the environment, but also contribute significantly to greenhouse gas emissions, the centuries-old reach into the sky is now in question. Skyscrapers become complicated negotiations between the way that we want to live in the future and the possibilities of how we can. There are many different approaches of culture, of government, of public policy that either constrains or enables skyscrapers.